All right, welcome back. Well, I'm here with Joshua Baca, Vice President of Plastics Division of the American Chemistry Council. Welcome, Joshua. Good morning. Thank you all for having me. Well, and welcome to Circularity. Happy so to be what, here. what brings the American Chemistry Council to Circularity? Well, first off, congratulations on getting us all back in person. You all have done a really nice job in putting this event together. And we're here because, you know, what we're working on is Circularity. Um, at the American Chemistry Council, we have a long-term view on the importance that circularity is going to play in our business. And so when we think about circularity, it is really not just good for the environment, but it's good for our businesses as well too, right? And so when we think about it, the focused area that I am in is really on how we make packaging, plastic packaging, more circular. Uh, we've done a couple of things, um, massive investments in advanced recycling, really trying to take hard to recycle plastics and frankly increase the recycling rates, get more used plastic out of landfills, um, and really work to conserve our resources, which I think is the most important thing. That's a key piece of circularity. Um, we're also working, you know, we've invested significant amounts of money for, uh, or from our, our companies have. Uh, $8 billion to date to grow this. Um, some of our companies are here. You saw Eastman and Dow and many others are advancing many of these circular commitments. And we also think there's a very important role for policy. You know, when we think about circularity, it's the only viable option that exists to dealing with waste in the, in the environment. We need to make sure that we keep plastics in our economy, not in our environment. And so for us, circularity is key. I think there's some small things that government can do to make sure that we accelerate that and foster the best of innovation of our companies. Definitely. Um, so extended producer responsibility yes. is one of those policies. Can you just share more about around your thoughts around that yeah. and also the state of it? Because it seems like there might be a ripple effect, but it's going slow with a couple of states having yeah. those laws on the books. Excellent question. You know, um, extended producer responsibility, first thing I always say is, what are you talking about? Because not all extended producer responsibility systems are created the same. And I think the most important thing when we think about that, we think that there are a couple of key principles that really need to guide that. The first off, if producers are gonna be paying money into the system, it needs to stay in the system. And we need to use that money to build more recycling infrastructure, we need to improve access, and we gotta improve outreach and education. And that money needs to be exclusively dedicated to that. Many times when we put these programs together, not just in, in circularity or recycling, the funds don't go to the intended purpose. And if we don't dedicate the funds to the intended purpose, we're gonna to continue to have the same problem. Uh, the second thing to your point, is there a ripple effect? I think we're close to that. Uh, I really do. And um, the reason I think we're close to it is because significant money is needed in the system to improve the system. And so I think everyone is kind of coming to that conclusion. Now, how do we design it in a way that is fair to all materials and all packaging and promotes the best of innovation is really kind of where we're having that debate right now. But we're pretty close, I think. So how do others get involved? I know the, the chemistry companies, but you talked a lot about packaging. Are you going out there and approaching the CPG companies oh, yeah. and working with the retailers on this? Yeah, absolutely. You know, when I think of circularity in our industry, uh, we're actually doing it in a variety of capacities. So back in 2018, our automotive team actually was the first ones to outline a circularity roadmap for our members. Now we're taking a lot of that find, those, those findings and we're working with the packaging. So we're out talking to brands, we're out talking to retailers, we're out talking to the, to the recyclers and the haulers and all of the vested stakeholders that are needed to get this done. Um, we have a great website, americasplasticmakers.org. I highly encourage you to check it out. We've got a great podcast. Uh, we talk to many thought leaders around these issues. So um, a lot of good information there. Got it. Are there any other policies that you think could be helpful outside of EPR? Yeah. We outlined a comprehensive plan last year called Five Actions for Sustainable Change. Uh, it is a comprehensive circularity solution. Calls for the use of more recycled plastic and packaging, 30% national recycled plastic standard by 2030. It promotes innovation in both advanced and chemical recycling or advanced recycling. It studies the GHG impact of all materials to help foster a better environment. Um, it creates standards and data and metrics to make sure we could do this. And of course, the producer responsibility system where the funds go back into the system to improve the system is part of all of that. Plan. Fantastic. Well, we've been talking with Joshua Baca, Vice President of Plastics Division at the American Chemistry Council. Thanks, Joshua. Thank you all for having me. Thanks. Congratulations again. Thank you to your audience. Thanks. Appreciate it.